Good morning and welcome to the Bethany Associate Reformed Presbyterian Church as we come together for a time of devotion on this Friday morning and as we read once more from the letters of Samuel Rutherford. And as we begin, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we give thanks for the mercy you show to us every day. For to God we testify that we are not worthy of this mercy. And we are sinners and we fall far short of your glory. But dear God, you ever love to show grace unto your people. And dear God, we rest in the promises that you've made to us through the Lord Jesus Christ. And dear God, we ask your uh, blessings be upon us as we come and as we read this letter written by a faithful man uh, so many years ago. And in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, today, again, we are reading a letter by Sam Rutherford to a gentleman by the name of Robert Carsluth. And he was a, a man who uh, had been thrown in prison and may have died in prison. We're not really sure, but he was thrown in prison for his faith. And Rutherford wrote him this letter while he was in jail. Let's hear uh, what Sam Rutherford has to say to this man. Much honored, sir. I long to hear how your soul prospereth. I earnestly desire you to try how matters stand between your soul and the Lord. Think it no easy matter to take heaven by storm. Salvation cometh now to the most part of men in a night dream. There is no scarcity of faith now such as it is. For ye shall not now light upon the man who will not say he has faith in Christ. But alas, dreams do not make reality. Worthy, sir, I beseech you in the Lord to give your soul no rest until you have real assurance and Christ's rights confirmed and sealed to your soul. The common faith and country holiness and weekday zeal that is among people will never bring men to heaven. Take pains for your salvation, for in that day when ye shall see many man's labors and conquests and idle riches lying in ashes, when the earth and all the works thereof shall be burnt with fire, Oh, how dear a price would your soul give for God's favor in Christ. It is a blessed thing to see Christ with the up sun and to read over your papers and soul accounts with fair daylight. It will not be a time to cry for a lamp when the bridegroom has entered into his chamber and the door shot, shut and blinded on those who are debased who are committing whoredom with this idle clay and hunting a poor, wretched, hungry heaven, a hungry breakfast, a day's meat from this hungry world, while all the while they forfeit the love of God. All that is under this vault of heaven and betwixt us and death and on this side of sun and moon is but toys, night visions, head fancies, poor shadows, watery froth, godless vanities at their best, and black hearts and salt and sour miseries sugared over and confected with an hour's laughter or two and the conceit of riches. Honor, which is vain, court, which is vain, and suffer under lawless pleasures. Sir, if you look both to the laughing side and to the weeping side of this world, and if you look not upon the skin and color of things, but into their inwards and the heart of their excellency, you shall see that one look of Christ's sweet and lovely eye, one kiss of his fairest face, is worth 10,000 worlds of such rotten stuff that men claim to be of value and that foolish sons of men set their hearts upon. Oh, sir, turn your heart to the other side of things, and get at once free of these entanglements, to consider eternity, death, the clay bed, the grave, awesome judgment, everlasting burning quick in hell, where death would give as great a price as all the world. Consider heaven and glory, but alas, why speak I of considering those things which have not entered into the heart of man to consider? Look into these depths, these depths without a bottom, of loveliness, sweetness, beauty, excellency, glory, goodness, 
grace and mercy that are in Christ. And then ye shall look down upon the whole world and all the glory of it, even when it is come up to summer bloom, and you shall cry, Up with Christ! Up with Christ, Father! Up with eternity of glory! Sir, there is a great deal less sand in your glass than when I saw you last, and your afternoon is nearer even tide now than it was. As a flood carried back to the sea, so doth the Lord's swift post. Time carry you and your life with wings to the grave. You eat and drink, but time standeth not still. Ye laugh, but your day fleeth away. Ye sleep, but your hours are reckoned and put by hand. Oh, how soon will time shut you out of the poor and cold and hungry inn of this life? And then, what will yesterday's short-born pleasures do to you? but be as a snowball melted away many years since. Or worse, for the memory of these pleasures uses to fill the soul with bitterness. Time and experience will prove this to be true. And dying men, if they could speak, would tell you this truth. Lay no more on the creatures than they are able to carry. Lay your soul and your weights upon God. Make Him your only your only best beloved. Your errand to this life is to make sure an eternity of glory is available unto your soul and to match your soul with Christ. Your love, if it were more than all the love of angels in one, is due unto Christ. Other things are worthy in themselves in respect of Christ are not worth a windle straw or a drink of cold water in comparison to the glory of our Savior. I doubt not, but in death you shall see all things more distinctly, and that then the world shall bear no more bulk than it is worth, and that then it shall couch me contracted into nothing. And ye shall see Christ longer, higher, broader, and deeper than ever. He was our blessed conquest. To lose all things is to gain Christ. I know not what you have, but, dear sir, you shall desire Christ. Alas, how poor is your gain if the earth is all that you have, even if you've gained it in your free heritage, holding it without a sweat of your brow. It is not worth a thing if Christ be not yours. O oh, seek all midses, lay all oars in the water, put forth all your power, and bend all your endeavors to put away and part with all things, that ye may gain and enjoy Christ. Try and search his word, and strive to go a step above and beyond those who are merely fleshly professors, and resolve to sweat more and run faster than they do. For salvation is the race that we run. Men's midway, cold and wise courses in godliness, and their neighbor-like, cold and wise pace to heaven, will cause many a man to want his lodging at night and to lie in the fields. I recommend Christ and his love to your seeking and yourself to the tender mercy and rich grace of our Lord. Remember my love in Christ to your wife. I desire her to learn to make her soul's anchor fast upon Christ. For, dear brother, it is a sad reality that few are saved because they do not consider the sweet smiles of God, and they allow the world itself to take all of their glory. Let us then consider what joy the smiles of God in Christ will be and what the love kisses of sweet, sweet Jesus, and a welcome home to the new Jerusalem from Christ's own mouth will be to her and your soul, when Christ will fold together the clay tent of your bodies and lay them by his hand for a time, till the fair morning of the general resurrection. I have vouched before God, man, and angel that I have not seen nor can imagine a lover to be comparable to lovely Jesus. I would not exchange or niffer him with ten heavens. If heaven could be without him, 
then what could we do there and what would it be worth? Grace, grace be with you. Your soul's eternal well-wisher, Samuel Rutherford, Aberdeen, 1637. Amen. You know, this letter is very interesting for many reasons. One, because it's written from one prisoner to another. You know, this Robert Brown of Karlsruth was in prison somewhere else. And Rutherford, of course, is still in prison in Aberdeen for the preaching of the gospel. But even though he's in prison, his desire is to see men and women come to Christ. His desire is to see men and women understand that this present evil world is not worth one piece of sand in comparison to the stretches of beach that we have in Jesus Christ. And that's one of the most important things, especially in the day of plenty and pleasure that we live in, to always remember. You can have a hundred uh, Vanderbilt homes. You can have thousands of uh, accounts full of billions of dollars, and none of it is worth a penny in comparison <laughs> to the loveliness of Jesus Christ. And may we, especially in these days, remember that great and awesome reality that there's nothing in comparison to the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. For the shed blood of the Lamb has washed us clean and has granted unto us the very title of the sons and daughters of the living God. May nothing uh, be more precious to us than the sight of our Savior. May you be blessed today, and may you, again, uh, be watched over and taken care of by the Lord of glory through the power of the Holy Spirit and the promise of Christ. Amen, and take care.